If you run a home service business, your general contractor, HVAC, plumber, electrician, landscaping, etc., and you're getting frustrated because you just can't close your deals, you're losing out quotes to competitors who are charging less than you, and your leads keep going with other contractors, watch this video because I'm going to show you what your sales process should look like if you want to win more deals charging premium prices. How's it going, guys? My name is Steven. I run flexwebdesign.ca. We're a marketing agency and we work with contractors to add at least six figures to their business in under 90 days. If you want to learn more about that, go to flexmarketing.ca. Check out the link in the description and learn more there. Apply to work with us. But back to the video. So I'm going to show you in this video what your sales process should look like if you want to close more deals and close them faster. The problem that most of our clients run into when we start working with them is that a, they're not getting enough leads, but B, they're not closing enough of those leads. And so their sales process is lacking and the little leads that they are getting, they're just not closing a large percent of them, maybe 25, 30, even 40. But we're going to boost those numbers up to 50, 60, 70, or even 80% close rate. I'm going to show you exactly how we do that for each of our clients, the process from start to finish so that you can implement it into your home service business and close more of your deals. I'm going to cut the video now, show you a screen recording of the process from start to finish on a document so that you can see it at a high level and actually write it down. Take notes for yourself. Cheers. How's it going guys? So as promised, we're going to be going over the process to help you make your sales a lot more efficient, optimize it. So you decrease the amount of time that it's actually taking to close customers and you actually close more customers with it. So this is the process at a high level overview. I split it into three stages because it just makes the most logical sense after going over it, uh, a few iterations of this, but we've got the pre quote stage during the quote and then post quote and how to optimize all three of these stages. So let's get into it one section at a time here in the pre quote stage. So you get a lead, you get a phone call a form submission from their website. You want to call them as soon as you possibly can within minutes, if it's possible. Now, most of the time it is possible, but these are small little things, but the accumulation of doing these little tasks are what make your sales process fantastic and what win you the deals every single time. Call them to qualify and book the quote. So you got to qualify them, right? Know what questions you need to ask in order to qualify whether this person can move on to the next step in the sales process and get a quote. Maybe this person doesn't have a budget, right? Maybe they're in the part of town that you don't actually service. Maybe they're too far away. You want to ask them these questions so that you can know if they're qualified or not. And you know what that is for your business, right? A lot of the time, especially for home service businesses, there's so many tiny little niches and there's so many little qualifying factors. Maybe a lead will ask you if they can get their estimate on the weekend and just by them asking that question that they're not qualified. So you have to ask them on this initial call whether they can have a quote done during the week during specific hours. So there's these little questions. Think about what that is for you. Most of the time it's the budget, where they're located, how big the project actually is that makes them qualified or not. So ask them those questions on a phone and schedule the quote. OK, schedule the quote on the call so that you have it done with right there. You don't have to wait for them to get back to you to figure out a time you're going back and forth and delaying the process. Schedule the quote right there on the call. That's another reason why I say to call them right away. One, what this is doing is getting in touch with them ASAP. It's differentiating yourself right away because you're showing initiative to get in touch with this person. You care about this lead and actually winning the project. It's going to show them that this also is doing for you is decreasing the amount of time it takes for you to actually schedule a quote and get them booked in. Next step, send a follow up email with value every single day. So every day until this quote, which ideally should be scheduled out for at most a few days in advance, you want to do these quotes ASAP. This depends on the type of projects that you're doing. Of course, if this is just a lawn cleanup, it's going to be much quicker to get this quote done and close that person as a customer. Whereas if you're dealing with a large renovation project, the time it takes to quote and then close that person may take several weeks. So think about what that is for you. But ideally, you want to get the quote done in the next couple of days. Send value with a follow up email every single day. So if this quote is being done like three or four weeks in the future, you don't want to send an email every single day. Stretch this out a little bit. OK, now, what does this value look like and what is this even doing for you when you send them an email frequently until you've gotten that quote? You're keeping in touch with them. You're showing initiative again. You're sending them value before and after projects where you talk about the before state of the project, what was going on in this customer's house, and then after. What did you do and what does their life look like now? Sell them that vacation. 
blogs, your tips and tricks for whatever home service niche you're in, show them that, give them that free education and value. Again, you're differentiating yourself and you're posing yourself as an authority. They're going to value you way more over other contractors because most likely they're getting quotes from other people. They're going to value you because you put out educational content. And whenever someone puts out educational content, they are posed as an authority in this space. YouTube videos, if you have YouTube videos, testimonials from clients, send that over and bonus points for video content. Next thing here, send a personalized message. So the day of the quote, send a personalized message, a text, preferably it could be a phone call as well. Bonus points if you do a video message, like a selfie video message from your phone, bonus points for doing that. But send something personalized. Say, hey, Tracy, really excited to come to your home today and see what kind of value we can add to this project. If you got any questions for me beforehand, let me know, shoot me a text or give me a call. But otherwise have XYZ ready before I come there so that we can make this as efficient as possible. See you soon. It could be as simple as that. Send that as a text, as a video message to this client. Again, it's showing you're taking the extra step to go above and beyond for this person, asking if they need anything extra and sending them a personalized message. These are, again, little tidbits that make up a larger sales process that will win you more deals because at the end of the day, yes, running a business is hard and doing all these little things are tough, but it's what's gonna go the extra mile to give you more of these deals. So now we're at the quote stage. First thing here, this is one of the major problems that I see a lot of contractors making is their language. You want to be professional in front of your clients because if you're charging premium services, which you should be, you don't want to cuss. Use language that's appropriate. Address this person as Mr. or Mrs., depending on what kind of relationship that you already have with them. But be professional. Show that you are clearly different from other contractors because let's face it, most contractors, most home service businesses, they aren't using proper language. They aren't being professional. They don't show up with the proper clothing. They show up with tattered clothing that they just came back from a job site. They're all dirty. Be professional, okay? Next thing here, common things that you like around their house, right? Don't just be all business. If you see a picture, right? Say, oh, your son plays baseball. So does mine. What league is he in? How's the season going? Ask them questions about their personal life because at the end of the day, your relationships in the home service industry are built off of being personable, having the homeowners like you because they are trusting you with their home, right? They're actually trusting you with their home. And so you want to show them that you are a trustworthy person. You are somebody who's personable, who's friendly, that notices these little things about their life. And they're going to appreciate that you going the extra mile to do that. So at the end, you want to tell them the next steps when they're going to receive the quote and schedule a follow-up appointment slash call. You want to give them a specific time frame of when they're going to receive the quote. Is it going to be the next 24 hours? Is it going to be the next week? Ideally, again, as fast as you can, if you can do it in the same day, do that. But tell them what is going to happen next. You want to be in control of the sales process. The last thing you want is being bossed around by this client, them telling you, oh, we're going to think about it. Oh, we'll get back to you in the next three weeks. You are a salesperson. You need to be in control of the situation. So tell them, hey, what we do next for all of our clients is we're going to give you the quote in the next 24 hours and I'm going to schedule a call with you right now so that we can go over that quote together, answer any questions that you have so we can address any concerns on the spot. What happens too often is you do the quote, but there's no next steps addressed during that process. Right? You lose the client after that because you give them the quote and then they go ghost mode on you, right? Because they're going with a contractor that did it for cheaper. Tell them when they're going to receive the quote, but schedule a follow-up call. It could be over Zoom could just be a phone call with them right on the spot then and there. That way you're in control of the sales process and there's a next step that is clearly defined. So both you and the prospect are on the same page. Okay, so now that we're in the post quote stage, what you wanna do is send the quote, bonus points for scheduling the call to go over the quote live. So let's say you schedule the call for the next day at a specific time. It's great to actually go over that quote live with them so that you can show them the breakdown of all the material cost, everything like that, so that you can answer and address any concerns they have on the spot. Next step, follow up with them until the appointment, right? So if you haven't had that appointment yet, maybe it's booked for a week in advance because of certain situations with the client and you couldn't do it sooner, Follow up with them with the value. Keep doing this. You don't want to stop following up with them and giving them as much value as possible because again, it's going to keep you at the top of their minds and it's going to pose you as that authority. So they're going to be more confident in your services. And even if your quote's higher, which should be higher than other people because you want customers asking, why is this person or services so much higher than other businesses? That free, valuable education is going to answer that question in their mind of why you price your services higher. Finally, address concerns on that appointment or on that call answer the questions that they have because they will probably have questions and then close the deal on the spot. Or 
If you don't close the deal and you have to schedule another call, do that. But at the end of the day, you want to schedule something. You want to be in charge of the sales process at all times. You want to be the person who is the authority, who owns the power in the situation. And even if you don't close the deal, even if someone refuses to go with you, they're going to be thinking about you. And you've got to be okay with walking away and not being able to close this deal. To truly be in control and have the power in any sales conversation, you need to be okay with walking away and not closing the deal. Be okay with them saying, no, you know what? I want to do this for a cheaper option and be totally fine with that because the last thing that you want to do is lower your price, lower your profit margins, do the job and lose money on it. There are definitely scenarios in which you want to take on these smaller jobs, might be less profitable, you might lose money on, but you're building a relationship with this person that you can see being very long-term and having a larger project for you in store in the future. If you see that, it's up to your discretion. Of course, it's your business. But at the end of the day, the big theme here is being in control of the sales process from start to finish, lowering the time that it takes for you to contact this person, qualify them, schedule the quote, get them the quote, and actually follow up with them after the quote. Having this process in place, I'm going to zoom out so that you guys can see the entire thing now again, but having these processes in place are what's going to make the difference of whether you close this person or you don't close this person. And having this, you're going to understand your sales process much better. You're going to improve it and your colleagues and competitors are going to be wondering why you're closing so many of these projects. This is what's going to make a difference in your business between whether you close someone or you don't close someone. Guys, if you implement this and you actually get some results from it, let me know. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video.